You do not have to defend the Word of God. That's right. The truth is strong enough. God can defend Himself in the Word. Yes. And so all you need to know is what the Word says. And spending time with God, spending time with Him in the Word, and allowing yourself to be equipped and trained is how you become effective. Good morning, dear friend. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg, and it's so good to be able to get together like this every day. What a privilege it is to study the Word of God. And we know that through the studying, we receive wisdom, insight, understanding, and above all else, we receive faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And so it is vitally important that we do study the Word of God, that we know what the Word says. So this week we've been having a look at our dynamic Bible college and the advantages of studying the Word of God. And to do that, we've had our dean, Pastor Danny Carmichael Green, the dean of the Bible college. So once again, Pastor Danny, welcome back. It's great to be here. I wondered if we could just take a moment to have a look at one of the most powerful years in the Bible college. That's the third year. Yes. Because in our third year, we actually practically look at how to establish a ministry. And you and I know, after being in ministry for so many years, many ministries don't fail because there's no calling. Mm -hmm. They fail because we don't know how to implement the practicalities of ministry. That's right. And in our third year, we look at actually doing a, a whole business plan around planting a church, planting a Bible college, mm -hmm. and we train you in, in the basics that you will need to actually run a successful ministry. Right. We train you in pastoral counseling. We'll train you in a little bit of um, the financials. We'll train you in, into what to look for when setting up the leadership of your ministry. Right. So that when a ministry is planted, it can be successful. Yes. The anointing of God is without a doubt in many people's lives that go out. But then we look at it three, four years later, they haven't been able to grow the ministry because right. they don't have the fundamentals in place. Yeah. And so that third year, it, it is such a powerful year. When, when students have finished that study, the ideas that God has brought into their lives, not just He has the Word, go and teach it, mm -hmm. but how to reach this world in a different way that makes your ministry unique and the way that God wants you to be able to touch your community that He's called you to. That's true discipleship. When you look at the life of Jesus, the way He taught, mm. uh, he, if you look at a lot of what is called ministry today, it's basically what happens on a Sunday. A uh, pastor gets up to teach a whole bunch of people sitting in rows, and then we all kind of got to go out there and try our best to do what we've, what we've learned that day. That's right. And Jesus didn't teach like that. That is important. We need to study what the Word says. Yes. And so we have a teacher-student environment to do that. But a lot of what Jesus did was through demonstration. He would take His disciples into ministry with Him. Yes. And there were even times when they tried minister and then weren't successful. And then Jesus would say, well, now this is how to be successful. Yes. And then he would show them and they would see it more accurately. So by the time Jesus had left the earth, those disciples were correctly trained, not just in the word of God, because Peter had to be ready. When the Holy Spirit fell in that upper room, he was ready to preach. Yes. And that preaching came out of a foundation of what Jesus had taught. Remember, he's, he was quoting scripture. This is what Joel said. And so he, was, he knew the word to be able to present his message. Yes. I don't think he would have spent hours preparing his first message. <laughs> you know, <laughs> maybe when the Holy Spirit falls, I better have a message ready yes. for me. But it was through the knowledge of what he had already been studying that had to be there. So when the Holy Spirit fell, that power hit him. And through the foundation of what he had studied, came forth. Yes. And it's through the understanding that God had equipped and prepared. Jesus did that through practical application. 
and he's watched Jesus move practically and he's seen him move in ministry. And so that's what you're talking about here. When we talk about the Bible college in that third year, we don't just want to teach you the information, mm. but that you can see what's involved in practical ministry. You're going to be involved in practical ministry, in the ministry that you're in. You'll be applying what you're studying. And then also in that application is learning how to do it. How to so do you're it. getting the information and the application. And that's really what that third year is geared around. That's right. You know that there are legal requirements for establishing ministry. Mm -hmm. There are things that people need to know. Now, you, Apostle Theo, they've gone ahead. They have had to research these, put them in place. Now you're going to have people who have had that knowledge, yes. applied it successfully, seen ministry grow. So if you are called to the full-time ministry, mm -hmm. this becomes paramount for you yes. because you, you don't have to go and hit your head on something that you didn't know was coming That's because right. we will help you plan for that. So successful ministries are planted mm -hmm. out of that third year. And it's not just churches. You know, when we say ministry, yes, we have people that have gone out and planted churches as a result of doing their three years of Bible college. And of course, the call and everything else. Yes. But that three years equipped them with what they needed and they could successfully plant the church. It's also for people that are called in other aspects of ministry, right. whether you are called as counseling or soup kitchen feeding scheme, uh, whatever ministry you believe you're called to, you want to structure that ministry in a way that it's effective. That's right. Because unless you have the vehicle carrying it, you know, it, it's all very well saying, well, I just want to teach the word. I just want to raise disciples. Yeah, but there's so much that has to happen around that and how to mobilize and get it. There's equipment that you need. There's staff that need to be arranged. There's the legal processes. All of that is a vehicle of vehicles that help carry so that you can be even more effective in what you're called to do. That's right. Third year was really the, the climax of all this teaching. You get to learn a little bit of Greek, mm -hmm. a little bit of Hebrew. You, you look at subjects like the history of the church. All of those then just grow your knowledge. So even if you have in the past had no theological training, God calls you out in the ministry, you're in right. a business place yes. and you've, you've got word behind you, but you just want to dig in deeper. Well, there is no end at the moment. Right. You know, Apostle Thea has done something here that can impact this nation for many, many generations. That's right. Because it doesn't end with just studying a couple of subjects. Yes. You can actually become a person who knows the word efficient in handling the word, as we were discussing the yeah. other day. So if you've wanted to study further, and again, we said it earlier this week, some of people say, well, I'm too old to study. We've got people that are well advanced in years mm. that are studying and students that have just come out of high school. Either way, can you imagine somebody, we've got people that, you know, many decades into their life, so you continuously dig in deeper and deeper and deeper into the Word of God so that you can be more skilled. Now, that may also sound intimidating to someone. Who says, wow, I don't know if I can do three years. And well, then start with one year. That's right. Just commit one year. If you start, just say, you know, next year, I'm just going to commit one year of study. And that year in itself is complete. Hmm? It's not like you left hanging at the end. That's right. You, it's a complete year. Each year is a complete year, but taking you higher into ministry and more effective and more practical. And so you could finish that year with a certificate and be equipped in the Word. And the aim of the first year is to cultivate this intimacy with God. Yes. So by the time you've finished your first year, your relationship with God has evolved so much. Yes. You, you, you know now. There are certain aspects of your relationship with God that will never be the same again. Right. And then after that, as you said, you know, if you say that's enough for me now, you can pack that away. You've, you've got that.
Mm. But I know that the vast majority of students land up doing their second year yeah. simply because of that intimacy. And the, th the second year looks at developing that leader. Right. You know, they, going a little bit further with God. I'm a leader in my home. I'm a leader in my workplace. What does God want me to know? And you know, something that we didn't actually talk about was that John Maxwell's leadership material is yes. also taught on Bible college right. with their permission. Yes. Um, so we're not just training you in spiritual aspects about how to pray, but, but how to be a leader that God calls you to be. That's right. We've got to look at leaders in the Bible and we say, wow, uh, how do they handle those situations? Mm -hmm. How do I become more effective? And you know how that impacts then into your business place. Exactly. We've got students coming to us and saying, you know, I've got promotion. I got promoted Praise because of God. aspects that I learned on Bible yes, college. Sir. I went into my workplace. I started applying them. My boss looked at me and said, wow, you've changed. You've grown. Yeah. I want to use you in this new place. And that so excites me. It is very exciting. And that's why I want to encourage you. When you keep hearing ministry, it's not just preaching from a pulpit. It's not just having evangelistic outreaches. In your business, where you are, this material is available. And also, I want to encourage those that are pastors of churches, if you would partner with us and say, you know, maybe you've been thinking, I want to get a Bible school going in my church. Uh, maybe you've looked at other ministries, other types of Bible colleges, and you on the research, give us a call. You can talk to Pastor Danny, and if you are pastoring a church, you're saying, I want to get a Bible college into my church or even if you partner with another ministry who already has a Bible college but you can use it because that's important to know that that Bible college is not designed just to equip the members in that church. We've got many testimonies of people coming from other churches. Yes, we do. Training, being equipped and going back and far more effective to a point where now the pastor is saying he wants to send more and more people. That's right. Because then that saves you having to go and develop all this curriculum, which has already been developed by Dr. Theo Wormerans. And so it's available. And this is material that's going to help transform and change your church. So if you are a pastor and you're wanting to get a Bible college going, give us a call. Let us know about it. And we'll give you the information that you need. And for everybody else that's saying, you know what, I just want to grow. I want to study in the Word of God. Give us a call. There are people that want to speak to you, people are ready to give you the advice. And as the week is coming to an end, uh, we've got some other things we want to share with you. I just want to keep encouraging you, just as Paul said, study, study, yes. show yourself approved. You don't have to feel ashamed that I don't really know what the Word says, or if someone asks you a question, you feel like you're cornered. Never feel cornered. Mm -hmm. You never have to, you do not have to defend the Word of God. That's right. The truth is strong enough. God can defend Himself in the Word. Yes. And so all you need to know is what the Word says. And spending time with God, spending time with Him in the Word, and allowing yourself to be equipped and trained is how you become effective. And so from this day on, make it a decision. You're going to be spending more time reading the Bible, not just reading it as a history book, but finding out who God is, what His plans are for you, His desire for you, knowing His kingdom. And as you do, and you expand yourself in the knowledge of God, you're able to be more effective in whatever you're doing. Well, praise God. We have had a great week studying the Word of God. And as it's been coming through over and over and over, I cannot act on something if I'm not aware of it. And it's so important to know the Word of God, to study it. And I remember that when I first got saved, Janine and I were in desperate financial situation. Uh, some of them say, you know, we were so poor we couldn't even pay attention. We were really struggling in a bad way. But then I discovered through the teaching of the Word that God is interested in looking after you. And not just financially, in so many different areas. If you have a look at verse 8 of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. 
Now, when I first read that scripture as a young Christian, I thought, well, that would be nice. But in the back of your mind, you're kind of thinking, I don't know, you know, I mean, is it really possible? Mm. Listen to that. I mean, that's a lot of alls and always. You yes. know how powerful always is. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, if anyone has been married, you get into an, a discussion, not an argument, yes. just a serious discussion <laughs> with your wife, and, and you use the statement like, you always say, oh. you know how any of us, when we hear that about something, how yeah, can you say always? I don't know always. But why? Because always is such an encompassing word. Mm-hmm. And yet Paul uses this over and over. He says, always having all sufficiency, that's no lack, mm-hmm. in all things. That's in every area. And it's not just money. It's in your business, your resources, your family, right. your marriage, your relationships, every aspect, health, all sufficiency in all things, and then an abundance. Yeah. That's over and above, left over. So yes. everything that you could possibly think, dream, or imagine has been met and supplied. That's yes, right. And then still having left over. Now, what's the abundance for? See, God's always wanting to work out of your life into somebody else's life. That's true. You've heard the statement before, I'm blessed to be a blessing. So now God does that. He gives you so much that you're able to get involved in every good work. Now, the good work is that is the preaching of the word. It's expanding the kingdom of God and reaching out to more and more people. That's what we're doing through these programs is reaching people with the Word of God. Now, how can I be involved in this? That I will always have all sufficiency. I thought, is that even possible? But when I was taught this from the Word of God, there's a key to it. There's a link. You go back, it says in verse 6, that's prior to verse 8. Because see verse 8 says, and that's leading out of the statement. Verse 6, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So... Let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And when I saw that, I realized, you know, I, I've been living a very selfish life. Uh, not selfish by nature, I don't think, but the sin nature is selfish. Yes, it is. And so as a sinner, we tend to, you know, we want to be kind and we want to help people, but me first. You know, I've got to look after myself. And when you learn the life of a giver, that you can never outgive God. That's true. That when you start reaching out and you start giving, then God's power begins to move in your life more powerfully. When you understand the purpose that God writes this word for us, it is always to bless us. It's always yes. to increase us. It's not to take anything from our lives. Mm-hmm. It's to bring something into our lives. That's right. When we understand that he says, I want you to learn to give, so that I can actually make space in your life for so much more Mm. so that you can give more. That's right. Who doesn't want to be generous? Exactly. How many times we we listen to a program on on the radio or the TV, we see something happening, we say, I I want, Lord, I just want to help those people. Yeah. And then you feel, how am I going to do that? Mm -hmm. You know, my little bit, is it going to make a difference? But God's talking about all sufficiency. Yes. He's, he's, getting, he's saying getting to a point where you never lack anything. We see it in the life mm-hmm. of Jesus. Yes. If he didn't have a coin on him then for the temple taxes, go find a fish. Yes. You know, there's, our, God's got a way for it to come into our exactly. lives. Exactly. And that's exactly what you just said there. When you, you know, sometimes people think, I, my little bit, will it help? Yes. Because what it is, it, what you're doing by saying, will this little bit help? Uh, maybe at that moment, it's like saying, if I take a teaspoon of water out of the ocean, will I empty it? Mm. That's never going to happen. By the same token, by putting a teaspoon into the water, you're not going to flood the ocean. But what happens is your little bit may not reach everybody that has need at that moment, but it begins an activation in your life Mm -hmm. where provision begins to flow more and more. And then you realize next time you actually got more to offer. That's right. And then that takes you to a higher place where now you begin to affect maybe one person's life. And then you affect 10 people's lives. Now, through partnering with a ministry like ours, where we are taking this Bible college around the world with partnership with Bible College International, Christian Family Church International Bible College, uh, under the ministry of Dr. Theo Vormerans, 
there are Bible colleges being planted all around the world. And we as a ministry have taken this and using it as our tool to transform and change lives here. We are reaching multitudes through this television program, through going out in outreaches, missions, into prisons. And you're a part of that. And you may think, I wish I could help more people. By giving into a ministry like this one, you are making sure that the Word of God can continue to be preached. And I want you to know, God's not mocked. That's right. You sow a seed. When you give this way, a desire to give for the work of God to be done, then you will see God's grace abounding in your life. Yes, you will. And so I want to thank all those that have partnered with us, those that have given to this ministry. And if God's speaking to you today to give, there are the details on the screen. You're welcome to use the facilities available. I want to pray over you today because that seed is reaching somebody yes. with the gospel of Jesus. And not only that, grace abounds in your life yes. and you will discover that you'll have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. Let's pray together. Father, I just praise and thank you for our partners today for my friend that is giving today and all those that have given, that you would bless them. According to your word, I declare your grace abounds in that family, abounds in that ministry, abounds in that business. And I declare they always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. Now, Father, we thank you as angels go forth to bring those finances in, that you would multiply and increase every seed sown I call my friend blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Well, it's done. When we honor Him and honor His presence and honor His life and you trust God, expect Him to lead you, you will always prosper and you will be blessed. You will experience the fullness of God. Alan and Janine Bag invite you to join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. I received an email from the client's finance department, a notice of payments. I went for an interview and was told that I was considered perfect for this job. Somebody deposited money into my account with the reference, as per the Lord. They would provide all the training that I need and company branded clothes. And to top it all off, a much higher salary than anything my husband and I had anticipated. More than 40,000 rand of medical bills written off and that I should not have to worry about any future bills. We come together expecting the presence of God to manifest as an anointing for increases. Join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. God is ready to increase you. He's ready to multiply you. Don't miss out on this opportunity to experience His increased anointing. He is the God of provision. He's the God of supply. And I'm ready to stretch and to step into the abundant flow of the kingdom of God. Join us for this powerful evening of celebrating the increased anointing. You can also participate through your seed by joining us online. God says, I give my word so that you can call on it. I give you a promise so that you can believe for it. For any info, please contact us here at Allen Bag Ministries. A Christian Family Church Bible College student can expect four things academic excellence, ministry training, character formation, and spiritual development. Let's start at the top. Our curriculum is rich with biblical truths that are carefully balanced between sound teaching and practical experience. Our international accreditation with the prestigious accrediting service for international colleges in the UK gives you the student peace of mind that CFCI Bible College is a learning experience of academic excellence. On to ministry training. You have a unique call of God on your life. Believe it. You are designed with specific and significant gifts and passions to fill God's kingdom. Experience is the best teacher. At Bible College, students receive training and practical ministry experience through assignments and they get to apply what they have learned. Thirdly, how does character formation play into all of this? 
We focus on developing a healthy mind, soul and spirit to help students become leaders of character and competence. You'll find no shortage of leadership opportunities as you devote yourself to developing others. And finally, spiritual development. Students at CFCI Bible College are immersed in an environment that accelerates a lifelong intimacy with God, paired with the message and the means of bringing others along on that journey with them. CFCI Bible College, ministry training where character formation and spiritual development are enjoyed in an environment of academic excellence. That's the CFC International Bible College registration opening on the 30th of November. Contact us at these details and we will help you find your closest campus. So I really want to encourage you, make a decision. You're going to study the Word of God on the Bible College. Christian Family Church International Bible College is available around the country, around the world, and I'm sure there's a center close by to you. Uh, our details are on the screen. You can call us here at the office, and there's somebody here waiting. They, they, they'll hear what you have to say. If you've got questions, we'll make sure you're connected with somebody, and they'll answer whatever you need to know. Well, Pastor Danny, thank you so much for this week. It's been wonderful studying the Word of God. And we're going to get together on the weekend. If you are not yet in a Bible-based, spirit-filled church, look for one in your area. Make sure that you get involved with it. Go let the pastor know I'm here. Um, you have to be a part of whatever you're doing. And if you are in Cape Town, come visit us. Yes. We've got campuses all around. The campuses are coming up now on the screen. I'm sure there's one nearby you. And if I am in the building of one of them, please come to me and shake my hand. I'd love to meet you. Oh, we'll get together again next week. Uh, you have a great weekend. This is Alan Bag reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We invite you to visit us online at alanbagministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bag. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Allen Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Allen Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. So visit us at allenbagministries.org, equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.